victory. I got the sweet, sweet victory in Jesus. Yes, I do. He's a mighty conqueror. Yes, he is. Shalom, family. This is your sister in Christ, Lady Summer, coming to you with another message from the Holy Spirit. I have been trying to get this message to you guys all day. <laughs> it's now 7.30, and I... I'm going to give the message that was given to me or actually brought to my remembrance on July 3rd because on July 1st this month started off with the Lord showing me how the seed that I had planted had produced much fruit. He showed me this by a potato that I planted <laughs> and um, he told me on that day to go and dig my hands in the soil. And as I dug my hands in the soil, I was pulling up potatoes. <laughs> and this is all connected to my journey, to my ancestors, specifically my grand, my grandfather, my mother, and my father. I have seen and heard back from them since they have left this planet. But 7-3-2023 adds up to the number 17 and the Lord told me to give the message today because today is the 777 and I was actually awakened by the ram's horn the same as I was on the sign 7 as a confirmation and then my sister in Christ sent me a text saying morning today is 777 the best is yet to come so the Lord confirmed his word by giving me Isaiah 60, which is about the new Jerusalem. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising again that's isaiah 60 about new jerusalem verses 1 through 3. on the third he reminded me of the 40 day and night consecration fast that i began on that day july 3rd 2018 and it ended on august 14, 2018. And when I started the fast, he told me to write down, have a, a journal, and write down every day the word of the day for that day. Also research the biblical meaning of the number for that day and write down everything that he says to me on those days. <laughs> so I did as I was instructed to do, not knowing that he was preparing me for this time and the life that I am currently living. So I'm just going to give you what he gave to me on that day in hopes that those who have ears to hear and eyes to see will be encouraged. And so that you can understand the true meaning of 777 has to do with Revelation 5-6 which has to do with Zechariah 6, 5. And the seven eyes, which is all seen, the seven horns, which is all powerful and all knowing, and the sevenfold spirit have been released in the earth for a very long time. The Lord is here. What was coming was the kingdom. We have to be the kingdom. So the verse of the day for the first day of my 40 day fast was forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. And I'm going to just read it from my notes because at that time, 
I was using the new international version. So forgive me because in the book, I actually do put the King James version, but he told me to leave it just like this because he is the word. He is the word. Okay. So the next verse that was Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Then I wrote, God is doing a new thing. I believe it, expect it, speak it, and confess it. I will pray and eat the bread of life daily as I meditate on the word day and night. I decree, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1.12 Completion is the product of commitment. I will complete this fast, and I did. I will lack nothing to accomplish the will of God as I practice the scriptures. I will not allow the enemy to impact my Bible principles. I will study. I will not allow the enemy to attack my faith or patience. I will grow through the process. I will humble myself under God. I will submit fully. What's for me is for me. And I want all that God has for me. I am assigned and anointed to do the things of God. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James 5, 15 and 16. I decree and declare that poverty is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. The limitation is broken off of my life. I will be everything God has ordained for me to be. I will do everything God has for me to do. God already decreed it. He gave birth to us by his word. Thank you for prosperity, Lord. I will have a handle on my emotions. I will get out of my natural mind. God gave me an anointing or an assignment, I will stay still to receive words from God. I will not miss my divine moment. It will be the right time. I will be in the right place with the right people, doing the right things with the right heart. God is shifting the seasons for me. I will experience the shift. I will not let my emotions get the best of me. When I don't know, I will pray. God knew the church would be attacked and false doctrine and self-appointed and simple-minded would follow. I'm not simple. I am chosen. I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will think outside the box. I am not bound to limitations. I am anointed. It's time for me to live in the overflow. I am what God said I am. I can do what God said I can do. It's not what others think about me, but only what God thinks and knows and has predestined for my life. I will deny the flesh to receive more of the spirit and draw closer to God so that he will be closer to me. I put my faith and trust only in the Father God. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now, he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble. So prosperous will your future be. Job 8, 5 through 7. My heart says of you, Seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Proverbs 27, 8. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I'm going to stop right here because this is where I was all this week in chapter 9 because this month, Tammuz, on the biblical calendar is the month of vision. But it is also the month that they made the golden calf to worship. And Moses came down from the mountain and broke the tablets. It's also the month that the Lord gave the celebration of the new moon to the women. He gave to the daughters because they did not give their gold to be melted down by the men to make the golden calf. But instead, they waited for Moses to come down from the mountain. The men thought Moses had died. So they wanted to make something to worship just like they made this false image of Christ. But he came back on Pentecost. He came back before Pentecost and appeared to many. But then he told them, wait in Jerusalem, tarry until you are endowed with power from on high. And when you receive that power, which was the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which was the promise of the Father, then they were to go and preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast out demons and free the people from these mental this, this slavery and this bondage this that is being self-inflicted every time they go to these buildings but I digress the next scripture on my first day of my consecration fast but if from there you seek the Lord your God you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 4.29. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Luke 11.28. Blessed are those who keep his statues and seek him with all their heart. Psalm 119.2. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Psalm 119.10. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Psalm 118.9. How is the number one related to Jesus? Jesus is called the firstborn of every creature. Colossians 1.15. And the firstborn not only of the dead, Colossians 1.18, but also among many brethren. Romans 8.29. He is also called the first of the first fruits. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 and 23. Meaning that he is the first of many to be resurrected to eternal life. Especially those in the first resurrection. See Revelation 26. Christ referred to himself as the first or alpha first letter of the Greek language several times in the book of Revelation. Revelation 111, Revelation 17, and also Revelation 22, 13. The apostle Peter tells us bluntly that it is through the name of Jesus Christ and him alone that a person can receive salvation and live forever. Acts 4, verse 10 and 12. There is no other name in all creation, in spite of the sincerity of countless billions who believe in other paths to salvation, eternal life, and so on, by which mankind can connect to the true God and fulfill their destiny. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I was talking to a Lyft driver, or Uber driver, I don't remember which one it was, but he was taking me to sing at a service last Wednesday. Very nice man from um, the Gabriel Mountains. And he wanted to hear me sing. He allowed me to practice in the car, which was beautiful. He, he said I could sing all the way to the service, but I didn't. I wanted to talk to him. Um, he shared his life with me, and then he played me some music, some Tibetan music, which was beautiful. But of course, I wanted to know 
what are these people singing about? <laughs> so he basically told me it was kind of a protest, a song in protest, and which opened up the conversation for us to talk about religion. And he started talking to me about Buddhism. And I was able to share with him how the prophet from which Buddhism came about was actually a prophet of the Lord. He was chosen, as many men have been chosen, but people make these people who are chosen into gods to worship them. And I talked to him about how all of the quote unquote religions all have a piece of truth, but all of them miss the mark in that they don't honor the son and you cannot get to the father but by the son because jesus became the mishkan he became the building the building is where the priest would go in and offer prayer and sacrifices for the people but jesus became all of that and by the time we ended the conversation, he said to me, that makes sense. It's it's really making sense to me. It's very clear. I listened to him. He listened to me. And I also gave him scripture. And I told him, Jesus is the only way to the Father. And that all of it belongs to the Lord, the earth and the fullness thereof. Just as I had written down on this first day of my 40-day fast, there is no other name in all creation. In spite of the sincerity of countless billions who believe in other paths to salvation, eternal life, and so on, by which mankind can connect to the true God and fulfill their destiny. Continuing with what I wrote that day, deny the flesh to receive more of the spirit. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. I believe that God is and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I wrote this toxic behavior is canceling out your blessings. And this is not worth me canceling out all my blessings. Forgiveness is not being vulnerable to someone else's behavior. I need to get control back. God is a magnificent possession in my life. I'm obsessed with God and possessed by the Holy Spirit. 1 John 1.1 1, 1. Firsthand faith. Nothing is infectious about secondhand faith. I'm going to stop right there. That's what people are getting and have been getting by going to these buildings, by not studying yourself, by searching out what the next prophet has to say, so on and so forth, and not studying for yourself. That's second-hand faith. So back to what I wrote. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. I refuse to walk in second-hand faith. Produce God physically with serenity, with light in your eyes. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior. Mind you, this is Titus. This was written before Revelation. People always forget that. Revelation was written. It's an open book. He told John, don't seal up the words of this book because it's at hand. Okay. So it says, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. And the King James Version says, let no man despise you. That was Titus 2, 11 through 15. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. 
For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Bilal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 6 through 16. And that is also Revelation 21, which is the three sevens, which is this day today. Because we're living in the Lord's day. We are living in God's appointed times. Back to what I wrote, Jesus is the aim which the Hebrew scriptures spoke of. I appreciate the Jewish root of the heritage. Jesus never came to start a new religion. Matthew 5, 17 through 18, but to fulfill that which had already been given. Jesus is totally the fulfillment of what God gave the Jewish people. The apostles were all Jewish, Matthew 15, 24. Ultimately, his purpose was to reach the world. But God began to bring Gentiles to himself through Jesus also in Acts 10, 9 through 28. Peter had a divine encounter about eating unclean things. He had to go share the gospel with the Gentile Cornelius. And remember, this is where the Lord told him, don't call what he has cleansed Amen. That's, that's a huge word right there. I think I'm going to do a study on that one, which I already talked about in the past. But anyway, moving forward. Genesis twenty-two eighteen: 18. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And this was the time of separation at the end. Paul called Peter out for being a hypocrite for fellowshipping with Gentiles in secret only. So we have to be responsible. This is what I wrote. Be responsible. God gave Adam responsibility in the house on the earth to reign and rule. He wants you to teach the people how to be responsible. Responsibility is natural and also supernatural. Until you become responsible, God will not trust you with anything. Everything starts with responsibility. A stare of being committed, answerable, accountable, and responsible to something or someone. Numbers 11.17 talks about burdened, weighed, loaded, where you bear the burden of the people. But Galatians 6.5 talks about a weight to govern yourself. You can't give authority to a little child. Be responsible for your own life and education in his word. Discipline comes from your responsibility, your ability to commit to accept responsibility, start with committing to God. This is not taught. You can't teach something you don't live. Every covenant of commitment starts with a sacrifice. See, that's the thing. I'm going to stop right there. That's the thing about the fast. The angel of the Lord told me to fast. I didn't understand it, but I knew it was the Lord, and I followed through, and I committed to it. And that's the thing. Whatever you commit to, you, whatever you tell God, if you do that, he'll honor, he'll honor it. Like me, on April 9, 2016, when I prayed to him, not knowing that it was the Rosh Kadesh, it was the first day of Nisan, I didn't know any of these things. But I prayed to him, I cried out to him to not only heal me, restore my joy, let me hear his voice. I didn't want to ever stop hearing it. But I told him, I made a commitment to him. I told him if he restored my joy, that I would live for him and do everything that he tells me to do. And that morning I woke up refreshed. He sent a dove. I went. There was a lady prophetess spoke to me. I heard his voice. I knew it was him speaking through her. He said, I am that I am, and I am all you need. That was the beginning of my journey. So I'm going to continue reading. Every covenant of commitment starts with a sacrifice. I will serve God, 
pray, have a relationship, and commit to this fast. The moment you step out, God gives you his grace to do it. Do not be influenced by the spirit of this age, wanting all for free, privilege and entitlement, rights and demands. Revelation 3.14, I don't know why I wrote that, but I haven't changed anything. The right of the people, in time thinking, never think about their responsibilities, sex with no commitment to marriage, all benefits with no responsibility, losing of priesthood, vagabond, someone who owns nothing, house to house, from shelter to shelter, marriage to marriage, divorce to divorce, start something, never finish, church to church. You must be settled, standing in your place and being obedient. Taking ownership is a part of ownership. God will not give you beyond your level of responsibility. You can't blame anyone else for your place in life. Jesus on the cross paid for your burdens, your hurts, and your sins. The blood of Jesus cleansed you to start all over again. You are a new creature. You must become responsible. You have faith. But don't be a part of this faithless generation. Matthew 12, 42 through 44. There's nothing wrong with being delivered and swept. Now you have to fill yourself up with anointing, faith, the word, and knowledge. Crucify your flesh. Say no to sin. Say no to your flesh. Fight for your call and deliverance. Fill up with faith. Fill up with knowledge, fill up with the word, and pray. The Lord delivered me from immorality, from depression, from fits of rage, and so on and so on. Accepting a responsibility gives you the power to lead, preconditioned to succeed when you are responsible. You have to take responsibility to do what God gave you to do, no matter what you are going through keep serving God. Your emotions do not matter. I'm going to stop right there. He talked to me back in July of 2018 about the seed that fell on the wayside. And he talked to me about how the birds are emotions. Okay. And if you are sad or if you are mad, if you're harboring unforgiveness, those are the things that come and steal the word from your heart. Isn't that deep? It steals the word from your heart. And it's the kingdom. It's the word of the kingdom that's being stolen. Because you're not able in your sadness or your anger or your bitterness to look forward keeps you stuck and you don't want to be stuck you want to be free that's why you hear forgiveness is for you <laughs> it's for you to be free anyway I'm going to get back to the message I wrote you have to take responsibility to do what God gave you to do no matter what you are going through keep serving God your emotions do not matter only the word matters being responsible brings authority and power. Commit and accept responsibly, preparing you to be priests, kings, and to be in the presence of God. Your life will accelerate after you have finished your commitment to God. I wrote, day one word, Jesus is Lord over my life. You can't do anything out of religious enjoyment. Hebrews 5.14, strong meat. You have to give it to those who are spiritually matured. More revelation and more liberty. You don't need as much restraint. John 4, Jesus asked the woman who needs water for water. If she only knew who he was, she would ask him for the living water. Neither one gets a drink of water, <laughs> but they both talk about morality and religion. She had five husbands, 
And she was a thirsty woman in the spirit. She was also thirsty in her nature and thirsty in her heart. She had something missing, even though she was a worshiper, even though she was looking for the Messiah. And that thirst affected every area of her life. But Jesus said to her, he would give her the water and he could fix the whole circle of the problems in her life. So she said, give me the water. So I thirst not. But she was tired of being thirsty and disappointed, not being gratified and going through this cycle of coming and going and met and lost. John 4, 28, the cycle is broken. I will not come back to the same place again. Whom the son set free is free indeed. Exercise your muscles in the spirit. You are not alone at any time, ever. This was the theme. I'm going to stop again. This was the theme of the week. Me telling people they were not alone. <laughs> they were not alone. Because he was trying to tell that to me too. And I know that I'm not. We say this and I'm not bragging. I have the whole host of heaven with me. Which goes right into what I wrote next. The angels of the Lord encamp all about them that fear him. They watch over me as I sleep. They stopped me from dying in the car wreck. They protected me from dying from the pit bull attack. They protected me from dying or being bitten by a baby rattlesnake. God has always been with me. I am a spiritual being. Do not let your fleshly drive stop your next level. I wrote lastly, the last paragraph of this day. Speak God, your servant is listening. John 6, verse 66, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. God is a light, and in him there is no darkness at all. God chooses the best. Jesus was there to save me. I'm going to end this message with scripture from the book that I'm reading from chapter 9. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them, and the Lord on the head of them. Micah 2, verse 12 and 13. Jesus spoke of these sheep during his earthly ministry. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John 10, verse 15 and 16. This was all connected to the comforter that Jesus spoke about in John 14. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, 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 ever, ever, ever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me. As I live, you shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. That is verses 
15 through 21 of John 14. And this is where the fruits of the spirit comes in, in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. The Galatian area was home to multiple churches, which maintained their own monetary economy. See 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and Galatians 1, 2. Somehow these churches became bewitched, Galatians 3, 1, and succumbed to a different gospel, which may have had its roots in Pharisee Judaism, or may even have been of Stoic origin or influence, according to Abram publications. We have been in the bewitched hour for centuries. I'm going to go down a little bit further in the chapter and read this little part because it's very much relevant with what I'm talking about right now. When I look back to the evening that I had offered up my prayers for the Lord to restore my joy and gladness, for him to comfort me and heal my heart, because it was broken and to hear his voice and to always hear it. It was April 9, 2016, the first of Nisan, the Shabbat HaKadosh and Rosh Kadesh Nisan. Now, because I had not yet studied the calendar, I did not know that on the day I prayed on this day in biblical history, that God had presented the first commandment of how to sanctify the new moon, Kiddush, HaKadosh, for the onset of Rosh Kadesh, and thus Nisan became the first month of the Jewish year, counting by months. As well, it is a minor holiday that occurs at the beginning of every month on the Hebrew calendar, so it is marked by the birth of a new moon. Because Satan set up the church system, and the way we worship today in these buildings, we were taught in these assemblies not to observe the Jewish laws and customs. We were even taught that we were the Gentiles. However, the observance of these things, like the Sabbath day, the Rosh Kadesh, and the festivals held during the High Holy Days, were in fact for Israel. And they were not only a type and shadow of the coming of Christ and his return, but some were perpetual and everlasting and a blessing according to the book of Jubilees which Moses also wrote. Hindsight being 2020, it became crystal clear to me that by honoring the Sabbath days, acknowledging the holy days and fasting, it was the very thing that brought about my divine encounters and specifically on August 7th, 2019, when I walked through heaven on earth and the Lord showed me in the clouds that we were in the end times, the end of the Gentile and unbelieving age, this is when he showed me I was born to live a holy life. He confirmed his words that day, not only in scripture, Isaiah 34 and 35, Matthew 24 and 25, but also he spoke with two loud thunders that shook the earth along with rain and lightning. The voice of thy thunder was in heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook, Psalm 77, 18. These experiences not only increased my faith, but it caused my heart to receive the gift of grace, whereby I could be led by the Holy Spirit into all truth. This scenario is exactly what Jesus was preaching about during his earthly ministry when he spoke of the kingdom of heaven coming down to earth and the will of the Father being done in the earth. Jesus said, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Matthew 6, 9 through 11. Those numbers, chapter and verse, again add up to 17. But even more confirmation is, he taught me that the numbers 9, 11 
mean to get into alignment with God's word. Something else my mother wished and prayed for me because Jesus told us, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6, 35. Those numbers add up to 14, which means delivery and salvation. The Rosh Kadesh, or the celebrating of the first two days of the month, came about during the time when they were waiting for Moses to come back down the mountain, and they thought he was dead, but he wasn't. This happened in the month of Tammuz, the month we are currently in. This was a type and shadow of the return of the Messiah, a new heaven and a new earth, as well as the new Jerusalem and bride of Christ coming in the form of the third Godhead, which is wisdom and the Holy Spirit, as described in Proverbs 8 and Revelation 21, which is the three sevens. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places. By the way, in the places of the paths, she crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Proverbs 8, 1 through 8. The numbers in that chapter and verse add up to 17 and the number 17 represents overcoming the enemy and complete victory god overcame the sins of rebellious humans when he began to flood the earth through rain on the 17th of the second hebrew month which is april may on the biblical calendar that flooding was a type and shadow of the lord pouring out his spirit on all flesh the end time harvest and the former and latter rain because Noah's ark only had eight passengers and only those people on the ark were saved because Noah found grace with God. We look at the flood as an example. Only the righteous were saved and the wicked perished. And once the flood cleared, it was safe for them to exit the ark and it was safe for them to exit the ark, the Lord God gave Noah and the inhabitants of the entire earth the rainbow as his covenant promise that he would not again flood the earth. And it was Noah's family that he replenished the earth with. And that is what he showed me in 2018. The buildings or the sheep and wolves clothing had been preaching that the righteous would disappear and the earth would be destroyed. But this is not biblical because God was always coming to dwell with us on the earth, which he created for us. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth have he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down in the silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Psalm 115. Listen to the verses 16 through 18. The year of the dream, the year of implementation, the year of transformation. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who covers thyself with light as a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. 
thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of men, that he may bring forth good out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. Psalm 104, verse 1 through 15. This is the last verse for this message. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. Proverbs 10, 30 through 31. Listen, read Revelation 21 and 22. And understand, this is where we are, and this is where we have been. They lied to us for many, many years. They removed books. But in 2018, the Lord told me to study the calendar, and he told me, I want you to look in that word, and I want you to see if you can find where it says the righteous are going to disappear. And I never found it. I found just the opposite. And that's when I found out the truth. And that's when I was set free. I don't have any doubt in my mind about the things that the Lord says to me through the Holy Spirit because they always manifest. Matter of fact, I'm going to share a little testimony. I'm not going to say who the person is, but I received a lot of phone calls today. It's very unusual. I usually don't even get a call a day. I don't hear from people. It's few and far between. But today... It seems like after I heard that ram's horn, I heard from a lot of the people that I love dearly and, and people that I prayed for that pray for me. But one sister in particular um, blessed me. Uh, she gave me $250. And she has given me tithes in the past for blessing her with the word of God or interpreting dreams or praying or whatever you know when the lord tells her bless candace she's obedient and she does it well she blessed me with a gift of 250 dollars. i never talk about these things and after she blessed me with the gift the enemy tried to uh, come in and attack her but let me tell you what God did that through her father because she sowed a seed in me the Lord blessed her with $2,500 to do what she needed to do so you see how he multiplied that seed <laughs> I said wow and I actually cried she actually went out of her way to bless me and the Lord had her back and will always have her back but we don't forget about the Levites and we don't forget about the strangers and we don't forget about the widows and we don't forget about the poor the Lord don't forget about us but after she blessed me and she sent me a text with her issue I prayed and I didn't just pray for her I prayed for a lot of people. And I closed my eyes and went to sleep, and I didn't think nothing else about it because I knew today 
that I would hear a testimony from her. And when I sent her the text that said today is the 777s and the best is yet to come, she texted me back, all is well. And that's what we all need to be saying, no matter what it looks like, all is well. Because the Lord is working things out for our good, those that love him and that are predestined and that are the called. You can be sure he's working it out. He's moving in the earth. He's dwelling among his people. I didn't expect for this message to be that long, but I hope you look up tonight because tonight is also on this seventh day of all these sevens. <laughs> it is also the night of the alignment with the five planets and the moon. Five, the number of grace. Anyway, I pray this message has blessed you and God loves you. I love you. Until the next time, shalom. But before I say shalom, don't get weary in well-doing. You know, this is what you're doing right now. If you're on assignment from the Lord, you're not doing that for anyone to give you kudos or, you know, for man. You're doing it because you have a great cloud of witnesses that can see and hear. We were lied to. Oh, they can see you and hear you. I've experienced it. Oh, and in the meantime, I got another testimony. The guy that we prayed for about his heart. Remember last year we were praying for my friend. He called me and told me that uh, his heart, they told him it was at 10% and it would be at 10% for the rest of his life. He ended up having two more heart attacks. He was in the hospital for eight months, but guess what? <laughs> he walked out of there. They told him that he wouldn't be able to walk far and this and that. I spoke to him this morning. He's riding bikes. <laughs> he said, the devil is a lie. <laughs> because I gave him that scripture. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Listen, I believe this word. I hear about miracles every single day. Miracles, blessings. Um, God is moving. He loves us. And the wicked are disappearing. They're the ones who will perish. And we don't ever die. He's shown that to me since 2013. Those who live for Christ and die in Christ, you do not. So again, I pray this message has blessed you, that you are encouraged, that you are walking in the spirit, that you hear the voice of the Lord, and that you follow it. Because my friend told me, he died twice on that table, but his spirit came up out of his body and he saw everything. He saw what the doctors were doing, he heard them, but also it was two angels in the room. He said one of them was gold. <laughs> he told me all he said he will not ever think I'm crazy again <laughs> cause he said if I'm crazy did that mean he crazy he know he not crazy cause he know what he saw so anyway today being the 777 what is all that about Revelation 5 6 and I behold are killed and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The Lord is here. He is establishing his kingdom on the earth and the wicked will perish. Shalom. <laughs>